can a single ohm letter or character be used in some form of talisman or spell in association with its meaning? Well, Dagdi Evogus Folge. Hi, hello, and welcome. I'm John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School, here to answer your Kestra questions. Um, and the answer, not hard to say, yes, absolutely, a single own character can be used in form of um, spell, magic work, or as a focus for your kind of meditation based on its own association, based on what it's actually linked and connected to. Um, so there's a very kind of clear and easy answer to this, but before we give you the answer from the Oma's mouth, for example, we need to talk a little bit about Om itself. Um, Om is not a language. Uh, Om is an alphabet. It is a collection of symbols that are carved on an upright line, and the, the symbols are kind of intersecting or bisecting that line at various angles. And that then dictates the number and the direction of the angle and the direction of the intersection with the main line is what tells us what the character is. And from there, we then have an understanding of what the, the, the nature of the character is, and we can explore its associations and its connections. So it's not just a singular letter. There's also understandings and connections that go with it. Now, first thing I'll always say is Robert Graves has a lot to fucking answer for because there is no Celtic tree zodiac and the ohm are not specifically 100% guaranteed to link with zodiacal trees kind of stuff. Yeah, no, it's a lot of misappropriated nonsense, unfortunately, which still is pointed to and referenced um as as good resources which is why it's very very frustrating for us here and um, which is actually also why we founded the ohm academy so if you are fascinated about ohm about this ancient Irish language and want to learn more about it we have the ohm academy you can actually just google that or look that up and um, within ohm itself there is a tract there's an old medieval manuscript which talks about the ohm tract and in here we give it gives the stories of and the origins of Om. And Om takes its name from the Tuatha Danann god and champion of the Tuatha Danann, Oma. And so Oma was not just the physically strongest and heroic champion of the Tuatha Danann, he was also one of the wisest and smartest. And in order to prove his own scholarly ability, he decided to create this entire language just because he could. Um, and now, again, the in, the initial intent of the language of this, sorry, language, I keep saying language. It's not a language. It's a script. Um, it's a, an alphabet. So he creates this script to prove that he could. And then his intent really is that the script would be used uh, for like the, the higher levels of education and ability and documenting of things. And um, that it wasn't just something that you would, you know, write your shopping list in it was something that you would actually memorialize the fun which is why most of the ohm that we have existing in the island today are on memorial stones or on boundary stones or um, markers territory markers or indeed grave markers um so ohm itself has a number of different characters and it says in this ohm tract the the origins of ohm and uh, in fact the mother and father of, of ohm are oma's knife and oma's hand and that the, in order to create an ohm, you would need sound coupled with matter. In, and this is a fascinating thing that I really, really enjoy about it. Um, that ohm isn't just um, an expression of character. It's, it's, it's a way of taking sound and encapsulating that within a physical form, within matter. And so that kind of mindset around like the, the language that we use, the words that we use, the sounds that come out of our voices, um, and then encapsulating that, making that into a physical material form. There's there's something almost magical about that act. And in that process, we actually get the story of the creation of the first ohm. And this links to answering our question, because the first ohm that is carved, according to this ohm tract, is carved by Oma himself, of course. Again, the knife and the hand of Oma carve it. And it, the purpose is to bind sound into matter. And the, the matter he uses is birchwood. The sound that he binds to it is be, which is the first letter carved. And this really gives the final part to our query because the reason why he carved that first sound into the birchwood was to do it seven times 
so that those seven birchwood staves with the carving of sound around it will be put around Lou's wife to prevent her from being taken into the other world. And so by coupling the sound and the matter, by choosing birchwood and by choosing the sound of birch, he is using it to protect from otherworldly advances and that like the very, very orig origin stories of Ohm tell us that it's used and in and talismanic form in magical practices in spell work and spell forms. Now, of course, there are multiple different. There are five. Wait, let me get this right. I don't want to kind of get it wrong. I'm not the Ohm expert. My partner, Laura, is the Ohm expert. Um, but there are different kind of couplings of these characters known as Acme. And then within each Acme, there are a number of characters. And so initially, they're known as Feda. And then I think initially there were like 20 Feda broken into, I think it's five Acme of four or four Acme of five. Um, and then from there, there was additional feather um, put on. The, the four feather were added at the end um, as the, the script kind of evolved through time. But the understanding each individual character, it is a sound, and then that sound is then associated and linked with many different things. And so there is a lot to learn when you explore Ohm. It's not just learning your alphabet and then writing your words. It is about understanding the, the resonances of sound that are built to connect with moving that into a material form and then the purposes in which we use those material forms. And um, the study of Ohm is absolutely fascinating. And also, if you are looking to translate Ohm, what you'll need to do is that you need to look at translating the word you're looking to translate into Irish first, because that will then give you your sounds. And from there, you will translate it into Ohm. And you wouldn't directly go from English to Ohm because you're not going to get the same sound kind of structure. Um, so I suppose that's a little bit of extra information at the end about doing own translations. But again, if you want to know, really, if you want to explore this in depth and there is a whole lot of content to do and a whole lot of work to do to explore this, especially from a spiritual and magical practice point of view, um, the Ohm Academy is the place to go for that. Um, and so without further ado, really, I think that's where we need to draw this one close. The question was, can you use it for magical practices or talismanic work? Absolutely, fucking lutely because that was the first Ohm carved. That was the purpose of the first Ohm carved uh, by the god Oma himself. And so... Thank you very much for the cash. If you're looking for any more free resources from the Irish Pagan School, all you got to do is go to irishpagan.school forward slash free. You can catch a whole lot of content there or go to the om.academy uh, if you want to dive into om itself. So until next time, look after yourself. Take care. Agus Goodbye.